So we've now worked three different problems where we worked out the discrete time convolution. The first one dealt with very short, finite length signals. So we just plugged in for each value of k that we wanted to compute and actually just wrote out each term in the summation to get the values we needed. The other two problems, we did the reflect, shift, and sum approach. In this approach, what I'm calling the analytic approach, we basically take advantage of the fact that people have tabulated common convolution pairs. So we're going to work our problem where we can actually just look up the convolution of two common signals in a table and use that result to get the answer easily. So in this analytic approach, we are going to deal with a discrete time, linear time invariant system, whose impulse response is given as this. h of k is equal to minus 0.2 to the k plus 4 times 0.8 to the k u of k. So this is the impulse response of the system. And the input is given as x of k equals 2 to the negative k u of k. So we know the impulse response of the system, we know the input to the system, and we are asked to find, find the zero state response. Well, we know how to do that. We know that the zero state response is given by the convolution of the input with the impulse response. So this output, y of k, is just the convolution of x and h. So we need to compute y of k equals x of k, which in this case is 2 to the negative k u of k, convolved with h of k. And this is h of k for our problem. I know that I can distribute the convolution, because we've shown that discrete time convolution is distributive. So I can write it as two different terms. I can write it as x of k convolved with this first part, plus x of k convolved with this second part. And what I can do is I can think of these as just two distinct terms that I need to compute. I could compute these using the reflect, shift, and sum approach that we've been using. In this example, though, we're calling it the analytic approach. We're actually going to look up these in a table. So if you go look up in the table that you're provided, there's a pair that says if I compute gamma 1 to the k with gamma 2 to the k, that is equal to the following. It's equal to this expression. Gamma 1 to the k plus 1 minus gamma 2 to the k plus 1 divided by gamma 1 minus gamma 2, all of that times the unit step function. So if you look at term 1, you'll see that's exactly what we have. We have a gamma to the k, the gamma here is 2 to the minus 1, convolved with another term that's in the form of gamma to the k. Here that term is gamma equals minus 0.2. So we can use this result for term 1, and we can also use this result for term 2. So let's go ahead and do that. So term 1, so let's think about this. 2 to the negative k is what I have, is really 2 to the negative 1 to the k which is one-half to the k. So 2 inverse is 1 over 2 or one-half to the k. So term 1, if I use the result from the table, I can write as one-half to the k plus 1 minus a negative 0.2 to the k plus 1 over the difference times u of k. I can write a half to the k plus 1 as a half times a half to the k minus a negative 0.2 and the minus and the minus cancel to make that plot positive 0.2 times negative 0.2 to the k divided by the difference. The difference is negative a half minus a minus 0.2. It's really a plus then. So negative, I'm sorry, 0 0.5 plus 0.2 is 0.7. We can write it like this. And then I can even you know, multiply by 10, write this as uh, fractions. So 5 sevenths times 0.5 to the k u of k plus 2 sevenths minus 0.2 to the k u of k. So just using table lookup, we can easily write this down. And we can do a similar thing for term two. Term 2, using our table result, we can write like this. Again, I can factor things out just a little bit if I would like to. If I was on a test or something, I'd probably just leave that 2 term just how it was. But if we want to combine some terms, we'll, we'll factor things out a little bit. So I can write that as 3.2 times 0.8 to the k minus 2 times 0.5 to the k over 0.3. So you notice I've just multiplied by negative 1 numerator and denominator to flip the order of the subtraction there. And 3.2 over 0.3 is 32 thirds, and 2 over 0.3 is 20 thirds. So I can write term 2 like this. y of k, which is equal to the convolution that we've been computing, is just term 1 plus term 2. So you'll notice there are some common terms. The minus 0.2 to the k, that's only in term 1, but term 1 has a 1 half to the k, and term 2 has a 1 half to the k. So when I combine 
when I combine 5 sevenths and I combine minus 20 thirds, I get minus 125 over 21 times a half to the k. And then finally, the 32 thirds times 0.8 to the k. All of this times u of k. So this is what I'm calling the analytic method. It's really just kind of a table lookup. And when you're dealing with common convolution pairs, this is a fast way to work discrete time convolutions.